Our experience of the world through each of the five senses can be divided into two categories, sensation and perception. Sensation involves physical stimuli interacting with our receptors to create signals. For example, sound waves hitting the membrane of your inner ear, or visual information being reflected onto the retina of your eye. Perception, however, is the point at which meaning is extracted from these neural signals and involves the way we actually interpret the world around us. For example, categorizing something we see visually as a butterfly or realizing that the surface we've just put our hand on is actually really hot. If someone has a defect in one of the five senses, for example, being deaf or blind, could it still be possible to perceive this information by substituting it with another one of the five senses? In other words, could it be possible to hear with the eyes or to see with the skin? This concept of neuroplasticity was the revolutionary dream of the late Mexican scientist Paul Bakirita. In neuropsychology, it has been a long-held assumption that our brains undergo specific developmental stages called critical periods, where our neurons apoptose or die off, giving rise to refined pathways that allow us to achieve certain skills in interaction with our environment, like be able to acquire language or even develop a personality, and that after a certain period of time, around our late 20s, the brain is relatively stable. While this is true, Baki Rita helped us realize that the brain is really more plastic than we think. His work involved sensory substitution, replacing the sense of sight in blind patients with the sense of touch. Vision is only related to the actual organ of the eye to a certain point, and after that, it's just pulses. Series of complicated pulses along nerves going through the brain. While these pulses aren't any different from the pulses coming from any other part of the body, even the big toe, the pulses going on in our brain are all the same, like an on and off switch. It's the pattern, the location, and the rate of firing of the pulses that determine what this information means to us. If you train the brain enough, these pulses can be rewired from a different sensory modality to convey information that our brains ultimately perceive as vision. So Baki Rita developed a device that substituted the sense of sight for the sense of touch. It was an old dentist chair with a matrix of blunted needles against the subject's back. A camera became the eyes of the device, and the visual information from the camera was translated into patterns of stimulation on the subject's back, delivering information about the visual environment onto the surface of the skin. It's exactly like when you were a child, if you ever had a friend draw pictures on your back and you had to guess what they were drawing, you were training your brain to use information coming from the touch receptors in a visual way. Since then, all sorts of different sensory substitution devices have been developed. One of the most common being a device delivering electrical pulses onto the tongue, which has a highly sensitive receptive field. This device, known as a brain port, has 600 different sensors to deliver fine-tuned stimulation. And they work! A tongue device was successfully used in a 2005 study to help subjects physically walk through a maze. PET scans revealed distinct activation in the visual cortices in blind participants after using the device to navigate through the maze, compared to before when they had to do it by themselves blind. The implication of this science has huge meaning for improving the quality of life of people with disabilities, but also for our entire understanding of the brain itself. Rather than repairing problems in the existing systems of the brain, what if we focused on creating new ones? That's exactly what is being done with these devices. Baki Rita died in 2006, but his team continues to develop these devices at the Tactile Sensory Lab at the University of Wisconsin. One of their subjects, a blind man who trains to use the device, has said, 
I don't even see it anymore as the sensation of touch. It's automatically like a sighted person looking across the room and seeing something hanging on the wall. This is exactly what is meant by rewiring the brain, which may have once seemed like an idea out of a science fiction novel, but now we're beginning to see that neuroplasticity really isn't so fictitious at all. With the right training, the information perceived from our environment can be translated into a number of possibilities. After all, we don't see with the eyes, we see with the brain.